By 72 hours, however, the forecasting accuracy degenerates badly. At this time, a capricious typhoon might be anywhere within 400 miles of the predicted position. At the 24-hour position, however, the forecasting error averages less than 135 miles and is 95% accurate. By considering this error, a reliable 24-hour forecast danger area may be calculated. From the warning message data, select the radius figures for over 30 knot winds at the present and 24-hour positions. Using these figures, plot areas representing over 30 knot winds at each respective position. Note that the 24-hour 30 knot area should have the 135 mile error figure added. Combining these two areas forms the forecasted danger area to be avoided. This area must, of course, be recalculated with each updated warning bulletin received. All evasion plans must take into consideration the ship's position relative to the storm. Because the typhoon could move unpredictably in any of these directions, a ship located anywhere in this general area must be considered as being in a dangerous position. On the other hand, a ship in this area would be relatively safe. If a ship is in the dangerous area and has plenty of sea room, evasion may be possible by crossing the T. This tactic involves crossing the path of the typhoon downwind to reach safer southern latitudes. Do not attempt crossing the T without considering the danger of the heavy swell preceding the storm. This maneuver could result in a slow and disastrous rendezvous. Consider also the possibility of the storm recurving. Though a typhoon normally slows down as it recurves, it often begins to expand in diameter. A ship too near may be encompassed by the expanding wind field. Take nothing for granted with these killers. As shown by these sample tracks of past typhoons, it is possible that future tracks will be highly erratic. Such behavior will definitely complicate the harried captain's typhoon evasion planning. Evasion tactics are often dictated by the geography of an area. For example, ships operating in the waters of the Gulf of Tonkin and South China Sea may find themselves boxed in by an oncoming typhoon. Since there is no other place to go, the only option may be to head south as swiftly as possible to reach the safer side of the storm. A similar situation exists along the southeastern coast of the United States. In this area, ships have little or no room to maneuver as hurricanes usually recurve along the coast. A suggested maneuver is to head south through the storm's less dangerous semicircle to reach the safer southern latitudes. Though hazardous, this tactic may be preferable to being battered in an unsuitable port. In the Gulf of Mexico, a ship can be literally boxed in by an approaching hurricane. At the mercy of the storm's movement, the ship may be forced to ride it out as best she can. Because this possibility always exists, it is worth reviewing the rules for maneuvering when caught within a tropical cyclone. To escape from the track of the storm, bring the wind to the ship's starboard quarter. Note the course, hold it and run for the less dangerous semicircle. When the wind is backed or shifts counterclockwise 15 degrees, the ship has entered the less dangerous semicircle. Once in the less dangerous semicircle, again bring the wind on the starboard quarter, note the course, and hold it until the storm has passed astern. If a ship is caught in the more dangerous semicircle, bring the wind on the ship's starboard bow and hold it there. Make as much headway as sea conditions will allow. Keep changing the course to hold the wind on the starboard bow until the storm has passed astern. The final decision for the manner of maneuvering in a storm is, of course, the captain's. Every type of vessel has its own peculiar handling characteristics. 
Some ships glide better into the sea, while others handle better going with the sea. During a storm or at any time, the captain is always the best judge of his ship's performance. Preventative measures to be taken by ships in port require an analysis of several factors. These include the tropical cyclone's forecasted danger area, the measure of the harbor, and the type of vessel involved. Small vessels with limited range would most likely seek shelter in port under any circumstances. If a port is considered an unsafe haven, all larger ships should sortie to seek safety at sea or run for a safe haven. Generally, the senior officer present will make the decision to sortie or to remain in port. Such a decision should be made as quickly as possible. Ship's captains should familiarize themselves with all typhoon and hurricane haven studies for areas they might be concerned with. These documents present an evaluation of the many factors that determine harbors as safe havens. An excellent example is Sasebo Harbor, Japan. Sasebo Harbor has most of the characteristics desirable in a safe typhoon haven. It is open to shipping 24 hours a day. The inner harbor, Sasebo Co, is a nearly perfect haven. The bay is large, landlocked, and well protected on all sides by hills and mountains. The harbor is well equipped with repair and service facilities for a large number of craft. Berthing facilities are available for numerous small and large vessels. Within the bay, there are numerous mooring buoys and suitable anchorages affording good holding ground. Ships fortunate enough to find a haven with these qualities have little to fear from even the largest tropical cyclones. Regardless of the evasion plan, a ship in port or at sea must prepare for the worst. If the ship is to stay in port, all mooring lines should be doubled up and additional lines and cables should be run out. Additional fenders should be lowered to prevent damage to the ship's structure. If the ship is moored to a buoy, the mooring cable should be adjusted to obtain optimum riding conditions. A very short scope of cable causes excessive strain on the buoy and cable. A long scope causes greater tendencies to yaw. Use of the main engines during heavy winds will ease the strain on the mooring gear. Be prepared to get underway if necessary. Station special sea details and maintain all main propulsion, steering and navigating equipment at full readiness. Before encountering heavy weather, the primary items to be considered are stability, water tightness, and secure stowage. To ensure maximum stability, pump bilges and fill all tanks to eliminate free surface effect while taking on ballast as directed by the commanding officer. Stow all movable heavy topside weights as low in the ship as practicable. Augment sounding watches to keep close check on empty voids for signs of leakage. Pump voids if necessary. To ensure watertight security, set material condition zebra, modified as necessary. Secure all topside vent covers and take other special measures as necessary to prevent flooding of the ship. All compartments must be checked for any loose stowage. Every loose item must be secured to prevent damage to the ship or bodily injury to personnel. Remember always, the time for taking all measures necessary for the ship's safety is while still able to do so. And one final word. When you receive that first warning of an oncoming typhoon or hurricane, prepare for the worst, but do everything in your power to stay out of it. It's a mean, miserable, and extremely dangerous place to be.